there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode 10 of season three of Van Helsing. Okay, so I really was like thinking, oh man, we finished and what a weird note we finished on. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait a minute. No, we're not done yet. No, we still got two more. Yeah. I was like, that's so weird. Yeah, it was one of those things. Yeah. And oh my God. So I was, I was messaging Steve during this episode and I'm like, this is the most cringeworthy episode. And I'm like, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. Yeah. And then he's messaging me. Back. He's like, oh my God, the hook. And I'm like, and the sound effects. It was horrible. And this is awesome because it was horrible because it made you like feel it. Right. And I'm like, I was tensing. Every time she was doing all that bouncing, basically. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to tell you seriously, my back hurts today because (laughs) of it. Oh, God. This was was something else. And it was was. weirder because we didn't have, like, a whole bunch of people either. Right. A very small cast. Yeah. Basically a cast of two, at least at any given time. So, all right. Let's jump into some ratings news, shall we? All right, episode 10 brought in a 0.12 in adults 18 to 49, with 0.381 million viewers, making it the 80th rated cable show for the day. It actually bumped up a little bit from the previous week, so that's good. That's not too bad. Nope. All right. So, yeah, hopefully you guys aren't out there like me thinking that the season ended. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. It's been... uh, one of those months already, yeah. and we're not even that far into it. Yeah. I mean, my brain's everywhere, I'm sure. Same with you. Tons of stuff happening right. for everybody. You know, if you're celebrating holidays, it's like, oh, gosh, now what? There's so much to do. Right. So, yeah, I think I get a pass on having, like, a major brain fart moment. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's jump into episode 10. All right, Outside World. Vanessa, trapped in an abandoned slaughterhouse, wrestles between the light and dark sides of her own self before she can move forward on her path. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, kind of weird, too, because the way we start. Right. Like, we finally see the flashbacks to what actually happened. Right. We didn't know what happened exactly. Walking through the forest. She's facing some serious guilt at having given in to her primal cravings and murdered an innocent man in cold blood just to feed. And yeah, it was pretty gruesome. Yeah, it was. Of course, normally she'd be able to hide these emotions from herself and those around her. But this time, she's got the newly ever-present oracle to remind her of that guilt. Thanks a lot, lady. Right? And we don't even know you. No, but... Vanessa recognized her from her childhood real quick. So that is the person Uh that she had seen and the person who may well have caused the accident. Very much so. Mm. So this woman is definitely maneuvering Sam and Vanessa into position for what seems to be a big face-off. But to what end? I mean, does she think they're going to pair up to rise the dark one or battle it out to see who's going to be... The next dark one. Well, that's interesting because when Vanessa was basically arguing with her, she's like, I'm going to find the other totem and I'm going to free the dark one. And the lady, you know, the Oracle's like, yes. 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 And she's like, and I'm going to kill him. And she's like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) We'll see about that. (laughs) Right. And so I'm like, okay, so she wants you to free him. Right. So no matter what you think is good, maybe that's not the best idea. Exactly. We don't uh, need a um, 
gatekeeper Basically, and key master situation right. going on here. <laughs> it sounds like it's exactly what he wants. So maybe yeah. no. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm where I'm thinking this is headed. Right. So And then yes. right as the Oracle kind of disappears. Right. We have all dead animals all around. I'm like, what is happening? And you hear some zombie like sounds. Yep. <laughs> And Vanessa looks up, and guess who it is? Now, were you expecting to see Mohammed? I thought there was a pretty good chance that it would be Mohammed. Okay. Even though he's supposed to be chasing after Sam, with it being dead animals and his proclivity to at least feed on animals, yeah, I kind of thought, that's got to be Mohammed. Okay. I thought it was kind of funny then, because she's like, at first she's like, I'll make this quick. And then she sees it's Mohammed. She's like, oh my God, I won't hurt you. It's like, okay. <laughs> As you're still holding that machete, you know? Right. It's like, mm, maybe I don't trust you. And of course she wants to immediately change him back. And... Oh my gosh. Was that not slightly comical to you? Yes. <laughs> just come here. I just have to bite you. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll change it back. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take you. Wait a second. What? You're going to, what? It's like, no. no. <laughs> it's like, you know, there goes the Scooby chase ensuing. You just needed that music happening or some Benny Hill music. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I totally dated myself. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, Mohammed runs off and Vanessa's hot on his trail. And I like the way they actually did this because they actually get on top of a building and you kind of see him fight and tumble around but you don't see it up close like you would if they were in the forest or something we don't get oh any right of that you slow see some motion. of it like through the window right and i i and thought below. somebody was in there watching like i'm thinking sam was in there seeing what was happening or right, something yeah initially that's what i thought too is i thought is this sam's old uh school or you know that he was put away in or something oh that would be weird with all the meat hooks yeah very <laughs> So as they run across this, we see not really a skylight, but a glass uh, enclosure over the roof. And yeah, we kind of see what's going to happen next. Of course, right below it is a huge meat hook. And sure enough, Vanessa steps on the glass, goes through, and ends up getting hooked in the back. Okay. See, I honestly, I looked away for a moment because my dog was obnoxious. And I wasn't sure if Muhammad had like kind of pushed her and she fell through or she just fell through on her own. Yeah, I think she just fell through. So that's why I was like, what What happened? I missed it. Yeah. (laughs) It was like two seconds. Right. They had done that tumble and he had gotten up and apparently gotten across it without stepping on it. And as she got up to chase after him, that's when she stepped on it and went through. Oh, God, I got it. That makes more sense now. <laughs> but yeah, she was uh, hanging there like a prize marlin. Oh, and this is, as soon as that happened, that's when I was like, oh, my back. Yeah. And of course, she figures out that the only way that she's possibly going to get off this hook is to try to raise herself up far enough so she can reach behind her and pull the hook out. Yeah. Good idea. That was really the it, only it is a good idea, chance but, of getting off of this hook. But, oh, my God, the number like, of times she tried doing it. that, and then even when she was, like, kind of almost, like, jumping, and I'm assuming it was to try to rip it out of her. Right. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, stop, <laughs> please. It's like, I beg you, stop. Right. So, yeah, that you have to give. Whoever came up with that props because you didn't see any wires anywhere. And you right. know there had to be some. So, well yes, done, that was just, uh, crew. It looked really cool. It sounded really gross. <laughs> Which was perfect. Yes. And so after several times, Vanessa eventually succumbs to the vampire apocalypse version of This Is Your Life. I was not sure what was happening at first. I really wasn't. Right. Because all of a sudden, John from season one is there. And honestly, I'm like, who is that? (laughs) Until he started talking about what it was. Right. I'm like, oh, oh. 
we've had so many characters yep that it's like it didn't dawn on me who he was right yeah he was the first guy they got rid of in season one and i'm right there with vanessa he deserved every bit of it <laughs> even though he was arguing with vanessa about no he didn't rape that girl and oh i was drunk and just being oh and especially his line i kissed her she kissed me back she pulled away and then i choked her a little what, right. what? <laughs> exactly i choked her a little, little. excuse me i don't think right so. there it's like I, i'm sorry it's like if you hadn't gotten to that point okay you know the yelling freaking out maybe 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 but you got to the, I choked her a little. Who hasn't done that? Right. Um, I think most people are going to raise their hand at that point. Uh, yeah, I haven't. Right. Uh, you know what? I wasn't sad now. Right. Now it's like when it all comes back, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not sad you're dead. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Thanks. And she basically says she was right in killing him because she thought he was the killer and because he raped a woman. And, of course, she's just arguing with herself, trying to justify her kills. But, of course, we flash back to the previous kill, which there is no justification for. Right. There, there isn't. And I'm really trying to figure out what the hell happened. I mean, she just attacked him for no particular reason. Right. She just got bloodlust. Yeah. Now, of course, our Julius shows up, the human and good guy. And he's her moral compass, and he tries to tell her that I've done bad things too. And she argues back, well, that's because you were a vampire. That doesn't excuse what I did. That was kind of interesting, because I thought he was going to say something along the lines of, I wasn't always a vampire. Right. You know, to basically say, there's other things that I've done. So right. I'm guessing this means at least he was a good guy when he was human. Right. Yeah. From what we saw of his flashback, he was a generally a good guy. Now, granted, there may have been some things that he did wrong back in the 20s. It was a pretty rough period in the, in the U.S. Yeah. So, so he's the part of herself that wants to forgive her for the things that she did that were out of her control. Makes sense. So we have bad and good. Now we go back to the bad, because Vampire Julius appears. I wonder how, and I'm blanking on the actor's name for a moment, how he felt about being in full, like, Vampire Julius makeup again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, seeing it's been a while since he's been in that, so, yeah, I bet it was quite interesting for him, too, to pull that character back out and get to play with it for a little bit. And of course, it, it he counters cool, every <laughs> yeah. He counters everything she's heard, and of course, the doubt starts creeping back in again. And then, to make matters worse, we see Vampire Dylan pop up, a reminder of everything she's lost. That was messed up. Yeah, big time. Especially when Julius is like, "Did you do everything to save her?" Because of course, this is when you have Vanessa's like, "I did everything to save her," and. I'm thinking, okay, you're going to realize what's happening. Right. And Julissa's like, did you, though? Uh-huh. And she's like, all you had to do was feed me. I'm like, oh, crap. Nope. Yeah. This was definitely the emotional roller coaster from hell for uh, Vanessa. Yes. It was rough. Yes, very rough. Then we get Susan's appearance, and we get to spend a little bit of time with her as she's trying to pump Vanessa up with goodness again until Sam arrives and basically does his thing with Susan threatening to kill her with the knife threatening to bite her and you go oh man because Sam just went to town with her you know the truth now and come to the dark side we have cookies yeah. <laughs> But yeah, just the way he kept going on and on, and he's like, just all the stuff he was saying, I was like, ooh, hold on, he's almost making sense. Hold yeah. on, I must not be in the right headspace <laughs> right now. <No. laughs> this is probably the best argument that Sam has ever had with Vanessa over anything. Right. 
and he was definitely laying it on thick. And I don't understand, though, how she's remembering Susan as a scared individual when at the end, Susan had changed and she became a lot stronger. Right. Yeah, that was a little curious, too, that that the Susan we got with Sam was completely different than the Susan we had without Sam. Right. Because it just kind of flipped and you kind of went, huh? Yeah, I'm like, I don't like this. No. <laughs> And just when Vanessa's about to give in to her guilt and her anger, and of course her still very terrible flesh wound that she's been hanging by the hook for probably 12 to 15 hours, because it was daylight when she went in and it's daylight now again, Mohammed appears. What is with his Spider-Man thing? I, I don't know, but it was awesome. <laughs> and, okay, it's like he knows something's not right. That's why he ran away from her. Right. And yet he's like, oh, I'm going to creep up. And I'll just, I'll just take a little nibble from this, doing this little Spider-Man thing. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and Vanessa's just begging him, come on, you come to mama. You want some of this, don't you? Right? <laughs> but seriously, I was scratching my head with that. I'm like, huh. Now, you would think Muhammad would have been smart enough to say, oh, I can get off the roof and go through the building. <laughs> but no, he's just feral enough to do things absolutely the hardest way because of instinct. Okay. It's, it's like I wasn't even thinking about I that. To, I want to eat. Okay. And I don't care how. It's I'm getting there now. <laughs> so yeah, course, I, I wasn't thinking about that. But the way he was creeping down, I'm like, what the hell is right. this? So, of course, he gets down far enough to where he can bite her hand and comes crashing down to the floor. Yeah, I love it. She's like, come on, Muhammad, come on, change. <laughs> and he kind of pulls himself up on all and knees his in the hands and kind of crawls away for a little bit. And up comes all the vampire goo. Oh, welcome back. Yes. It's nice to have our... Real Mohammed back and not vampire Mohammed. Yeah. It's like, hey, uh, can you help me out now? Yeah. The chair. I need the chair. Right. Ah, okay. And he eventually gets her down and curious that the wound, even though there was still blood on the floor, the wound where the hook had gone in had already sealed up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So when she said... The wound is healed around the hook. You're going to have to really pull. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, that One was really last hard. slap in the face for Vanessa. <laughs> that was just really hard. And I'm like, cringe, cringe, cringe. Yeah. So despite his earlier protest, he is quite glad to be a person again. And the two spend a little time catching up before Vanessa tells him it's time to go. Mohammed tells her about Sam's turning him and then... Locking him in the bunker, and so Vanessa still isn't very happy with Sam. Mm -hmm. Not that anything would ever change that, but that just kind of... Makes it worse. Makes it worse. Now, of course, he is ready to be back to being her buddy and going wherever she goes, but Vanessa's still not having that. You go, come on, Vanessa. What you're trying to take on is going to take every ally you have you can't yes, just but I raise understand the dark she's off. freaking out yeah she doesn't want to put any of them in danger yeah and that's all she's trying to do is save their lives and that's noble as everything but it's stupid she needs every all hands on deck to do this and yes it's possible some of them may die but it's better to lose one or two and be successful than to be turned into the Dark One yourself. Right. So. Oh, man. Now, of course, he finally agrees and walks off while under his breath saying, come hell or high water. And once he gets <laughs> far enough away, he turns around, <laughs> doubles back. So he's on Vanessa's tail. Now, if he's smart, he'll stay far enough behind until she needs him. But we but, shall see. Yeah. I think we'll be dealing with Sam. <laughs> right. We also see the Oracle. Yeah. Once again, and she's just kind of laughing. It, I, so I wonder if she kind of was whispering something that also made Muhammad like turn. Hmm. 
Or if she's just like, this is what I seen. This is what we need. Right. Well, because she was going to pit Mohammed and Sam against each other because mm-hmm. that's who Sam loved, that he was supposed to kill the thing he loved to prove to her that he was worthy of whatever right. she wants him to do. So, yeah, she's just eating all this up. Now, of course, Sam aye. can't turn him, but he can sure kill him. Well, this will be interesting. So we have a couple more episodes, unlike my brain thought. So it should be interesting. What What do you guys think about this episode and what might come? Shoot us an email at sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com. Let us know what you think. Check out the website, fangirlzone.com, our Facebook, our Tumblr, our Twitter, everything. Tweet along with us. And when you're tweeting, don't forget hashtag Renew Van Helsing because we still haven't heard anything. Right. Which, of course, is... Not good. It always worries me when it's getting this close. Right. But let us know what you think anyway. We do want to know. And while you're at it, if you can rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends about the show. We do hope you're enjoying our podcast. And for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I'm Sean fangirl And I'm Steve. You know what you have to do now. And until next time.